Okay, guys, um, welcome to the next part in the series on sash windows. Um, I've taken the measurements, like I said, of the, the windows. So I've got the width, the height, and the thickness. Um, and this video is basically going to be um, setting out the rod for the, for the window. So I'd normally do this in the workshop, and it gives you a full size reference to work from. But I'm going to do it on the computer today, uh, basically because it, it's like a 1.6 metre long window. Um, and trying to film the, the intricate parts whilst moving along the rod is quite difficult. There's a lot of camera movements involved and uh, it doesn't show up the best uh, pencil lines on, on an MDF or timber rod. So um, it's just the same on the computer, but instead of doing it on the computer, normally you'd be using like a uh, combination square and uh, drawing it out full size um, as a cross section of the window. So I've taken a size um, of, my, of the windows. Um, it's a basic height measurement. So if we just draw a line for a start, like you would on the timber rod, um, and the, the window I'm gonna be focusing on um, to copy or to draw out for you guys to see is one of them small windows on the north side of the house. So it's 1535 tall. And if we just do a line between them, that point and that point, we can get rid of these. So that's the, the height of the window, or the sash, sashes between the window. Now I said I would uh, draw this out as a full window for you so you see how everything works. So this is the vertical view of the, um, of the sash window. So that uh, line there is full height. So if we come one side of that and just work from that, from say the inside sash. So we've got a 44 mil thick sash. And uh, this would be the very bottom of the sash. We've got a nine degree bevel there. So if we uh, put a nine degree bevel on this section, that gives us our line there for the bottom rail. We've got a, what size bottom rail? 90 mil bottom rail. So that's our bottom rail size. If we go to the top, we've got a 47 mil top rail. Now the distance between them two, uh, 13.98. We uh, take off the thickness of the meeting rail, so 40 mil. So it's 13.58 divided by two, 679 mil. I'm going to have to cancel that line. 679. And if we go from this one, 679 should leave us with a 40 mil gap in the bottom. Yeah. So that's where our meeting rail will, will sit. So we can draw that on. Um, the parting bead is eight mil. So this is the outside of the sash window. This will be the inside. So we can draw the basic shape of our meeting rail on there. Now, the meeting rail has a rebated section um, halfway through it. So the bottom rail, obviously, it'll be the top side that is rebated. So it'll be this section here over the parting bead. Um, and then we can draw the top side rail in as well. So we've got uh, eight mil guide rail there. We've got a 44 mil sash. And that's the meeting rail for the uh, top sash. Now generally, when you make these, they're not going to be tight, so you can have sort of a, a two mil gap either way here. Um, on the old windows, it's, it's quite tight for them touching, so you, you've only got four mil there that they will engage in each other. So um, <laughs> what you'll see on a lot of windows is it's quite tight, or that will just be a, uh, a beveled section there and not actually have the rebate in it. 
but we're going to keep the rebate, um, probably reduce that down to, to one and a half mil. But it's not that important now, it's, as long as it doesn't touch the, the other sash when it's uh, sliding up and down, it's fine. You just need enough clearance for that. So that will be our clearance for the meeting rail. Now, this is the inside sash, so what I'm going to do is put a uh, wrong button, put a draft strip in this. Um, it's seven mil by three and a half mil. And the draft strip is just a brush seal, so it will uh, it will look something like this. Oh, wrong button. That'll be uh, black. So that's a brush strip there. I'm only going to put that on the uh, bottom sash so that when you open the windows from the inside, you won't see the brush strip in the top sash um, visible um, in, your, in your view line. So it just looks a bit nice so that you don't see the brush strip. Um, just bear with me a second while I plug my laptop in. Okay, so that's the uh, the meeting rail. Um, so we could take the dimension of that and write it down. So it's uh, going to be 51 by 40 mil thick. Same with the bottom rail. We know that's going to be 90 mil this direction by 44 in that direction. Um, top rail again. We can draw some detail in that. So traditionally. Um, these windows would be glazed from the outside using a putty bead. So what I'm going to do is, because I'm double glazing them um, and I'm using a coir, I'm going to glaze them from the inside. Um, so the sash will be made with, a, with an internal rebate. So a 15 mil rebate. Um, I'm going to use uh, 14 mil double glazing. So it's a 464 unit. Um, so I'm going to need around a 33 mil um, deep rebate. So that is going to be our, our rebated section. And uh, it leaves, what's it leave on the outside? 11. Uh, let's reduce that down a touch. What are we going to reduce? So 11 mils, probably not quite enough. So we're, I'm going to do that a uh, 31 mil rebate. Um, and then on the outside of the uh, sash, we'll have a, I have to cancel that. Oh. On the line, you bugger. So it's a 30 degree mould that um, basically looks like a putty bead. 
I usually leave a two mil flat on here actually. Tools protractor. I wish it was a quick key for protractor. Anyway, 30 degree mould. So our sash profile at the top rail should look like this. 31, that's the B. So that's our top rail. Get rid of that guide. Um, and we'll have a two mil foam tape here. 14 mil of glass. Um, what we left with, 15 mil. So a one mil foam tape there, and then a 14 by 15 mil bead in here. Um, like I said, with the other windows, we'll have uh, a moulding on here to replicate the old moulding. So we'll look something along these lines here. Need a circle tool. In arc. That will be our, uh, it's an OG, it's not an OG moulding. In the first video, I kept relentlessly banging on about how it was an OG moulding, and it's not. It's an uh, Ovlo moulding, that shape of moulding. Um, I've known that for years. I don't know why I was calling it OG. I think uh, just because I was uh, waffling on, um, I got a bit carried away, but that's called a an Ovlo mould. And we just put a little radius on these uh, corners here. So a two mil radius on everything. A uh, three mil radius on everything, sorry. Ideally, and uh, we'll arrest this edge as well by hand, so that's not um, not a sharp corner on the external side. Um, so the glass sits in like that with with a few mil gap around the outside of it. I'll draw the uh, the glass in in this one as well in the meeting rail. So on the outside sash, the top sash um, in this case, because we're glazing internally, this one needs the groove in it and no bead. If you're glazing from the outside, obviously your glass is going in from this face, so it would be the bottom sash that would have a groove in it and not a rebate, because the um, this section here can't be a bead because you've got no access to it to uh, fix it and it would give no strength to that, that meeting face. So, the because we're glazing internally, the top sash meeting rail has a groove in, in it instead of a rebate. So you can still do that 15 mil deep. Um, we've got the dimensions here of what it will be. So you'll do the same front face um, depth as the rebate. Um, and this is the, the line where the bead finishes. What I tend to do is just go a few mil more, say three mil more. It gives you a bit of wiggle room to physically get that glass in place and then sit it up vertically against the tape. Um, if, you, if you do that a tight groove to the glass size, you'll never get the glass in place. So we'll have a groove that looks something like that. And we can draw the glass in with a bit of a gap. So I think that's the glass section there, 14 mil yet. So glass size, we're going four mil pieces of glass, and then we've got a six mil cavity. Um, the edge of the glass is around 12 to 13 mil. So that will be our edge spacer in the glass unit. Um, then you have a, a butyl sealant around the outside, and then this is the actual pane of glass here. Okay, so uh, lost you there for a second. My screen recorder had a bit of a problem. So that's the panes of glass. Um, 
within that we'll have uh, a foam tape so to glaze on this outside we'll have uh, a foam tape uh, which will be it's around 10 by 2 there and then on the inside um, this side on the inside so the the meeting rail of the top sash will just be filled with um, a sealant and uh, tape masking taped off and filled with sealant so that'll be a, a cavity void filled flush with sealant to the inside um, sight line of the sash so if we uh, erase that section there we'll put some uh, colour into this that's what I wanted black that will be white I want uh, white there what's that there and then that's to get deleted you do and that will be tape there white and we need a wood colour for the rest of it let's choose a stupid wood colour ah. let's go with that right so white sealant um, that's the butyl outside of the unit that can be uh, put in its glass Um, internal space of the unit, either flush or below the sight line. Um, on the outside of this um, meeting rail, we'll have a bevel. So again, it's a 30 degree bevel with a 2 mil flat on the top. Oh, barmy. And uh, what I generally do is fill that section there in as a uh, pointing seal. So you'll uh, masking tape to the this corner here of this bevel, and then masking tape. Uh, it's around two, two to three mil away from the uh, sight line of that um, piece there, and then just fill that void with um, a high strength sealant. And really force it into that and then uh, smooth it off with a spatula and then pull the masking tape off and you get a, a nice clean um, pointing seal around the edge of the sash. Um, what we will have in this sash because it's the bottom of the piece of glass is a drainage groove so from here we'll have a 16 mil um, tenon run that line in so you can see it 16 mil tenon within the center of that tenon I usually run a uh, it's around an 8 mil uh, groove so a circular groove like a capillary groove in the sash and it runs through the joint and the the wedged mortise and tenon so that if any water did eventually get in here um, it doesn't sit on the unit it sits in this in this groove and it can escape and uh, ventilate out so it can be dried out instead of just sitting wet all the time so that's pretty much uh, the bottom rail complete other than a uh, a small capillary groove in the base of here so I usually do a uh, again an eight mil capillary groove, but not full depth or not half depth. It's just just a, just enough so that any water coming down the outside of the sash hits this groove, and it's got to go vertically um, to travel along. So, so it will tend to drip off here rather than travelling back along the sash. So that's the uh, outside sash um, meeting rail done. Top sash uh, meeting rail. I think that's the right colour. Yeah, it's pretty much finished. So we've got a glazing bead from the inside. We'll have a uh, one mil foam tape to the inside of the glass. So you stick the foam tape to the the bead flush with the edge, locate it against the timber, and then stick it against the glass. 
Um, same on the inside here, so you'll have the foam tape. Yeah, have the um, spacer block in the edge of the unit, butyl putty, raise that, that's white, so that's a foam tape, and then we've got a uh, pointing bead again here. So I could uh, clear this as well. So that's the inside of the unit, and that's white. So that's how the top rail will look um, with the uh, tenon in here at 16 mil. So that's our, our tenon position, um, belt edge, it's all in there. That's how the cross section of the top rail of the uh, sash. That meeting rail is done. So this meeting rail then glazed internally. We'll have a 15 mil rebate that direction, 31 in this direction. Take that out. And then uh, that's pretty much how the rail will look. We'll have some small arises on these, uh, these corners here. On the internal side, um, again, we've got a two mil foam tape only 14 mil of glass, one mil for the inside, and then our bead will finish there. So again, it's a 14 by 15 mil bead. Um, and we've got that uh, one mil foam tape there. and the edge of the unit, and the foam tape to the outside. So this piece here, um, where the foam tape finishes up, will just be finished, because it's a flat piece, will just be finished with sealant flat again. So same principle, you're just not following the bevel. It will be a flat piece um, of sealant, or a glazing sealant there. Some arises on these. I think what we can do is copy the one up here. You just select it all, Control and C, or you can um, press M for move. And then just if you hold Control and then click, it will drag a copy of it onto your, um, your next piece that you want to copy it to. Saves you a bit of time drawing it out every time. So that's the edge of our unit. And we can uh, follow this down to our bottom rail. Do, 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 do. What's that? Come on. What's going on? Let's draw that another line. It's a 90 mil bottom rail. So again, it's a 15 mil rebate. 44 sash and a 31 mil rebate in this direction. So you can draw the rebate on the inside. We've got that uh, two mil step and then we've got the uh, bevel for the outside 30 degrees. So that's the basic profile of the bottom rail. And again, um, drawing that uh, bead on up here and copy it or move it with the control button. Drag it down here 
can just, uh, oh, actually, we can just flip it, can't we? Flip it along. Green, no. Flip along. Red. No. It's always the last one you choose. Flip along blue. There we go. And we just move that into place. Um, where am I going to do that? Not 15 mil, it says. There we go, I've done that wrong. See, it's dead easy to go wrong, isn't it? <laughs> so that wants to be 15 mil rebate. I don't know what I've put in there. We'll get there eventually. And we can move this in. There. Delete these guides. And uh, draw the glass in. We can go up here, connect the two. And we've got uh, 12 mil edge to the unit. Six mil sealant and the two four mil panes of glass. And draw them in quickly. Again here, twelve mil edge to the unit and uh, six mil sealant. tape drawn in on that one. Let's draw the tape in on this one. So we want a 2 by 10. And then that one's already in place. And then we can draw the sealant line in that we're going to use as a wet sealant. And that's how it will look. So uh, the glass panes are there. That's your butyl sealant, and uh, that will be the timber. So internal bead, uh, two mil foam tape, push the glass in, uh, foam tape attached to the bead, the bead will seal the glass in and you fire a pin through here, and then uh, masking tape this section and you create that uh, putty bead around the outside, and that provides you with a perfect perimeter seal. Now, that is the, uh, what you would draw on a rod. Oh, forgot the uh, drainage groove here for the um, mortise. So we've got a 16 mil mortise. Centre of that. We've got a, uh, a drainage groove, remember. And then this is our, uh, our mortise position for the top rail. So the mortise will be about um, 30 mil, 35 mil, and you'll have a, uh, a wedge either side of that for about 8 mil, 6 to 8 mil. That'll be our mortise position for the, uh, for the bottom rail. These two centre rails here, um, the mortise runs right through because we've got a horn extending down past them. So uh, we've measured that to be, uh, I think it was 70 mil, 70 mil horn between 44 mil sash. Oh, come on. There we go. Um, and it will look uh, something along the lines of this. 
So we've got uh, it's around 20 mil. Um, if you imagine we're in the other plane now of parting or rebate bead or staff bead. Um, so what the horn shape can, starts from that point. So it looks something like that. Then there's a 15 mil rebate. So from 15 mil, we can't use a perfect circle. Um, the 50 mil rebate, ignoring this section here, is uh, is the glass rebate. So as the horns extend down through the the rail, that's the point at which we've got to take it back flush with, and what we're left with to make the horn shape from. So what we've got on the existing is around 12 mil of flat, and we want a circle tool around here, something like that. And we've got another circle tool like this. And we've got a shape that looks something like that on the existing sashes. So that'll be our horn shape that we're going to try and replicate. My only advice when you're designing these things is um, if you're doing a lot of them, make sure that you've uh, you've got the ability to to sand this section easily. Um, if oh, I don't use a bobbin sander or anything like that, but if you're going to be using it um, and you've only got say a, a 30 mil bobbin, make sure your 30 mil bobbin will fit in this curve. Um, otherwise, it makes it difficult and you're going to be doing it like by hand. Um, I sand them by hand anyway. I've got a technique that I'll show you that I use that keeps them all nice and square. Um, but yeah, just worth noting, if you're going to be machine sanding, make sure this uh, internal curve here, you can fit your machinery. So uh, just to just give you an example there of what the, the horns will look like on the sash. It's sort of like a cross section of a cross section. Just rotate that 180 and uh, lob it in here. There you go. Delete the guides. And there we have it. So I need a piece there, don't we? That is our sash window. Sashes, so for the purposes of making the actual sashes, um, that is all you need to draw. So we only need these dimensions and measurements um, to be able to make the sashes. Now, uh, I said I'd do a bit more, uh, a bit more of a drawing of the actual sash windows for you so you could see how they work um, within this section. So. We'll start at the head. Um, obviously that measurement was to the head of the window. We've got like a, usually about 20 mil protrusion from the parting bead. So uh, an eight mil parting bead. Uh, they usually have a radius end. So we'll stick that on. Oh, need to do that. Um, you can delete that section. They're about Went, usually grooved in about a quarter, you know, seven mil. So usually around 27 mil in uh, in size. So that's your parting bead. Um, obviously this section here travels along. Um, it will travel along around the thickness of the sash, usually plus a tiny bit extra as well. So a 44 mil sash. Um, if you finish it, it's 44 mil. The staff bead will sit just slightly to the other side of it. So we'll, we'll do it 44 for now. And then let's say a 20 mil section of timber on the outside. And we can draw that, uh, that in. So let's uh, bring the line up from the bottom sash. So we've got this, this line here. And then uh, we'll have a uh, 20 mil staff bead. Let's make that 25. 
this is more, more accurate to what it would be. Now this board here on the head of the windows is usually around 20 mil thick. So that's a 20 mil thick board. And it goes to the, uh, the outside of these, this sash. Um, I'm not showing any gaps or anything on these, this drawing. Um, generally on a new sash window, you'd have draft strip gap allowances. So um, a couple of mil gap there for a draft strip and these timbers would have to allow for that extra width. But for the purposes of this drawing, I'll, I'll do everything shown tight, like a line drawing like I've done here. So uh, 20 mil thick board, draw that in. That's the head of the window. It's the wrong colour. Um, now from this piece here, on the inside, you will have your uh, staff bead. So generally you have a, a bit of a shadow gap on a staff bead. Um, so that's 17. Let's do that 4 mil. So it's 8 mil there. 8 mil there. So we've got 16 mil radius on the staff bead. And then you usually have a, a shadow gap flat there. That's sort of your, your general shape of your staff bead. It sits in this position. Now, that section of timber there is the head. Would, uh, would usually be jointed behind the staff bead. So let's say we've got a 20 mil front board um, on the face of the styles and the head. Uh, probably be slightly thinner than that, but for argument's sake, let's say it's 20 mil. So this piece of timber on the head here would be, uh, would be 20 mil thick. And I'll draw this in, working back from, from what it would be if there's weights in there. So from the centre of there to this board, it's 53 mil. So we'll, we would create a 53 mil square pocket. So that would effectively be our pocket. And then this board would extend beyond this or extend to that point there. So that would be a single piece of timber. This is a blank space. And then a similar principle here. We have uh, the outside face board. So it runs in line at this point here. It's around uh, eight mil flat on, on these ones. On this existing window, they're about uh, 16 mil thick, so they're nice and thin. And it's got a uh, Ovlo moulding on the face. So we'll bring that in two mil, and we'll put an Ovlo moulding on there. Something like that. And then that board travels back up to the top of that pocket side and it runs through. Generally you'll have, uh, I usually do it with a, a small rebate in here, um, obviously allowing enough uh, size in the pocket depending on what weights you're using. Um, I don't know what's in these existing windows because I've not cut them to bits to find out but uh, yeah, you, you find out what weights you're using, if they're square weights, take the dimension and add a couple of mil each way um, onto that board to make your adequate pocket size. And then um, probably rebate these sections of timber like this, take that away. And then uh, you'd sit like a, a six mil plywood or something in there and just put a nail through, a nail and glue through at these points here just to uh, fix that in place. And that creates your pocket for each window. So these are empty. Get rid of that. So there are your two pockets and you'd have your, your pulley that would stick through in the center of the window in this position here. And the pulley wheel with enough depth so that the, the center of the cord hung central to the uh, pocket of your weight. So if your pulley finished short here, your weight would constantly rub the inside of the uh, pulley styles. So the size of that pulley 
um, gives you the weight to the the cord to the centre of the weight, so it hangs true in the uh, pocket. I'm not going to draw the pulleys on because this is the head of the window, but that's how they would uh, often be finished. On the actual head of the window, um, you wouldn't have, you don't have to have this board here. It's quite handy sometimes to have a decent thing there to, to fix to. Um, if you're installing sash windows, quite often the, the fixing method would be to install a strap or a metal band to the top of the window, extend it past the face, and then uh, you can screw through this band into the internal brickwork reveal and to give you a decent fixing. Um, if the reveals are deep enough, I think the best way is to have a 20 mil batten screwed to both edges of the window that extends right onto the inside face of the brickwork or up to the plaster face. And then that batten can be used to fix the internal lining of the window board so that the lining that the architrave will sit from can actually be fixed to them battens and it makes your, your life dead easy because everything lines up and is solid and straight. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the windows that I filmed in the house um, would have just had a, uh, a 20 mil board from that position there. It was around 45 mil thick, I think, from memory. Oh, wrong way. Let's just draw it on. And then um, from that point, you have your uh, your architrave that sits on the uh, panel like this. And it will be about 90, something like that shape. I'm not going to draw a fancy architrave on, but you get the picture. That's the architrave. And then uh, obviously, the brickwork was here, so it was uh, about 75 by 102. That would be your first brick in the, the head of the wall. Well, in, on the head it would actually be stone, wouldn't it? But um, it's giving you an idea of, of how the window sits within the reveal. So from the outside you see this section here. Oh, that's not very good, is it? Let's redraw that. like the look of that. No. Right. Come on, there you go. Alright. There we have it. So that's what you see from the outside, the stone lintel, a small piece of uh, moulding, and then uh, your sashes. So from the actual stone to the sight line of the sash is a very minimal line despite you've got this huge box of a window that's about 100, 120 mil I've drawn here so they, that's why they look so slender from the outside is because it's all hidden within this reveal and then you'd have a second the internal brickwork um, will be sat back here like so it's all going wrong. In this sort of configuration, that would be the internal brickwork. And that's your, the cavity on this house. You know, we've got a small cavity between the, the two walls of around 70 mil. So that's the, uh, the head of the window detailed um, and how it all sits together. Um, we're going to have a look at the sill now. At the sill, uh, we saw on the windows that we had a, uh, around a five, six mil flat section there. Then we had a uh, another beveled section. So we can follow that through. Um, bring this line of the windows down. So that's the internal line. And then uh, obviously it finished at the same point in the bricks work there. At flush, so um, we bring that sill section down to here. It was uh, 45 mil front to the sill, and then that just extends back through uh, horizontally 
flat. You can run a uh, drip groove in this section here, if you wish, um, for when it's sitting on the stone. Um, obviously you seal this behind that drip groove, so uh, you perhaps have a quarter gap to the stone, and then your you bevel on your stone would, uh, would start from here. Well, perhaps be nine degrees, but uh, I'll just draw it in at that to show you uh, what we're on about. Bring this line down for it. So that would be your, your stone sill coming to this point here. And then you would, um, you'd have a big, basically a big piece of sealant that you'd sit the window down onto here. And then uh, any water would run down, hit the drip groove, run onto the stone and run away. And there's no chance of anything uh, traveling back under the window and creating dampness. And then obviously you've got uh, a break in the courses of the brickwork um, under here somewhere. So your stone sills generally stick into the cavity a tiny bit. So the, the cavity of the window is obviously starts here at the outside of the, the sash. So your stone sill would uh, extend in at, at some point. Probably it would leave a gap to the internal brickwork. It's easier on uh, newer builds where there's uh, thick insulation between the two cavities, but there would be a gap between the internal and external brickwork at that stone. Um, and it would look something like that as a uh, stone sill with the sealant hitting it there and the water can be dispersed, and then there's a, a cavity between that stone sill and the internal brickwork. Um, on the inside again, we've got that staff bead. We can just run this uh, section down. So the sill would actually be full thickness of the window, so from outside right to the inside, from that point there. Um, we'll just extend that line up for now. So you, you bevel that uh, under the sill and then stop the bevel there and bring it across level. Then you'd have your same 20 mil or 25 mil for your staff bead that you have at the top. So we can get rid of these lines here. Um, so it'll be the same beading as this. You can move that down. Forget which way we flipped it before. I think it was blue. Yeah, and put that in place. So that's how the staff bead will sit uh, on the uh, sill. So, like I said, the sill runs full thickness of the window. So that sill section is 137 mil by 68 mil in this case. Um, so that would be X 70 mil timber. Delete some of these guides. There's no path and bead or anything in the sill. What will happen is the, um, the board that's there, so the internal face board of the sash box and the external, like I showed you on the uh, walk around video, will be housed into the sill front. So there'll be a, uh, a section there housed out oh, me. at that depth for that face board to be uh, to sit within the sill on the outside and on the inside so that they run vertically up the window um, so that's it's just a housing joint um, notched into the sill but that's how uh, how the sill looks in configuration for the windows that we've got that we're refurbishing so, uh, like I said, on a lot of them, this section gets uh, rotten, sort of that degree there, or the front section, and it can go extend back to here. Um, you can find rot under the bottom rail if water's sat, and like sat in a capillary under that bottom rail, it can rot in this section here. But uh, in general, you find you'll be replacing the front of the sill, so you'll need to make a new section of this, um, chop the old one down at this point, and then join them back together to repair the sill. If not, uh, 
you can uh, just chop the whole lot out, make a new one, and we've got the dimensions to work from. Um, so that's generally how the uh, how the sash windows sit within the brickwork. Um, so that's the the brick cavity there. If you followed it through from above. So the second brick underneath would be uh, again something along these this sort of size here, and then the brickwork would carry down at that that point. On the inside of the sash uh, sill, you usually have um, a window board. So when you're making a new sill, you can put a it's like a ten by ten or a ten by seven groove 25 mil up um, or whatever thickness window board is in the in in place and that's got to extend like i said beyond the architrave for everything to run into it so it will be around 100 mil and find the center That will be our window board, and that's how it sits within the uh, window. Oh, cold hands. Not doing very well, am I? And then uh, obviously the the linings that run around the outside of the window run into the window board, and the architrave terminates into the top of it, and the window board just peaks beyond it with the uh, radius there. And that's how it looks um, from the inside view. So what we can do um, to get all that on one screen is um, bring it across and just um, put some uh, reference points on here and just copy them across. So that if you wanted to uh, see it all in one screen, we can um, we can do so. So it's a bit less confusing. And you can grab a screenshot of that, put your dimensions on, and you can go away and uh, make your sash or sashes from that bit of information. Get rid of these. There we have it. So you do this exact same thing on a timber rod. Um, I would have just drawn it, or I did draw the whole lot out on a piece of board um, using the edges as the outside face. You only need a, what's it, a 96 mil thick board or thicker and for all these vertical lines within it, just use your combination square set to that depth and then you can draw the detail in within it. Um, but you do need to draw them out as a proper sash next to each other so you can work out these, the thicknesses of these parts of the meeting rail, etc. But drawing it full size in the workshop gives you a, a reference um, for when you're machining. You can go back to it and uh, refresh your, your memory as to what you're going to be machining next because it can get quite complicated with the, especially the meeting rails, the orientation of them and these rebates. Um, you can confuse yourself very quickly and machine something wrong. So it's good to have the full size drawing there. Um, but like I say, it's easier on the computer to show you guys how it all works. So that's the vertical section. I'll just quickly draw out the, the horizontal cross section um, and that will about conclude us for the video. Okay, so um, drawing the other cross section, it's dead easy once you've got a start or you've drawn one section out. Um, it's just a, a copy of the head, really. We'll rotate it 90 degrees. Bring it down on this line here. Um, let's get rid of that.
So there's just um, four sashes or styles. And we copy that across, flip it along. That's looking, got the right direction again. Um, if you're drawing this out full size, the, the measurement we took off of the, uh, the windows will be from this point here, the width measurement, which was 687 on the small sashes. So we'd get that uh, measurement right on the drawing, and then uh, this is how it would be drawn away from that. So uh, inside sash, outside top sash. Um, what we'd have then is a uh, separation strip between the uh, two weights, 101 mil. So it's going to be, uh, so let's say, a six mil strip, 95. That's uh, 47 and a half from each side. So what we'd do there is to keep that in line with the um, parting bead. It's eight mil. We'll leave it eight mil, but generally that strip would be like a, a quarter, bit of quarter timber. So six mil, uh, just hung from the top. You literally stick a nail or a wedge um, through a, a hole in that strip um, so that it hangs from the top and uh, can't go anywhere and um, it just separates the two weights. So what you would have in here is uh, some um, solid weight. So it would be a cast weight or a lead weight. If you're making a new window, I'd probably use a square weight because um, you can get more weight in the pocket because it's a square pocket um, and everything's double glazed now. You, you need the uh, extra weight there to balance the windows. So. If you make them square and, and fit them in nice and tightly, um, you can get away with a steel weight or a cast weight in a square shape. Um, whereas if you're using a round weight, you're probably going to have to use lead, which is a lot more expensive. Um, so we'll centre these up just to, for argument's sake to draw a, uh, a piece of uh, lead weight in there. So they'd be, what would they be, 40 mil weights, wouldn't they? So we'd have that, um, that sort of size of weight. So that would be uh, where the weights will sit. So when we have a pulley in these styles, so we're 22 mil to centre, um, they're generally an inch. Um, you know what are they 30 30 mil 15 mil from center pulleys they will sit flush in the pulley styles so that would be the face of the pulley then from within that uh, you have a section or a press section or a steel section that um, extends back into the sash so you groove that section through the uh, the window and then um, that pulley will extend enough so that the uh, the rope will be a couple of mil beyond this uh, pulley face here or the, the um, pulley styles so let's say we're using this an eight mil cord um, on the wrong way there. You'd be coming six mil out from the face and you'd have a uh, an eight mil cord. So the pulley style will sit something like this and then it'll go to the centre so we'll find the centre of that circle, shouldn't have lost that. And the same on this side. And then um, 
that will be our pulley shape. Delete that. Delete that. So it's a 48 mil. So we want a 50 mil diameter pulley wheel. Um, so drawing out is exactly 48 mil to the center of the rope there to be in three mil off there, or two mil off there. So um, 50 mil is perfect for the, uh, for the job. I think that's drawn right. So there'd be a pin between these two sections here. Um, where are we? It's 48, isn't it? So uh, 25. There will be a pin. Who's that? So that will be the pivot pin for the uh, pulley style. And we can uh, draw that in black. Let's draw that in a different colour, actually. Uh, Grey for metal. Do, 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 do. So you can see there, everything in grey would be the uh, pulley. Um, that's our rope that would sit there through the weights, and then in the sash, it just you have a groove that shape. Obviously, you'll have a bit of a gap from the sash to the edge of the sash uh, pulley or the pulley styles. Um, a groove for the cord to sit in, and then you drill a hole within that uh, sash, sort of halfway down or slightly above halfway and you just tie a knot in the cord and that's what uh, holds the sash up. Um, other than that, everything's pretty much uh, very similar. You still have the same pieces on the head for standing the architrave off and covering that brickwork and then your architrave would sit on this piece um, wrapping around the brickwork and covering the, the gap between the window and that brickwork. Um, staff beads the same. Um, the pocket, like I spoke to you before, so this is the inside of the window. The pocket would basically release, so it's, it's long enough to get the weights into the, the box of the window. So say if you've got, uh, I don't know, 400 mil long weights, your pocket would be, say, 100 mil off the sill of the window. So the, it would need to be a 300 mil long pocket so that you could drop the bottom of the weight into the sill and then the top would go into place. Um, if you've got really long weights, you can feed them in um, with a shorter, slightly shorter pocket, um, feed the top in first, um, and then uh, as long as there's enough clearance for the, the weight to um, go in or play between the two sides to allow a bit of angle for the weight to go in, um, the pocket can be reduced in size slightly. But it basically, is the length that you need it and uh, you separate the, the joint so you don't put any glue or pins through from the internal uh, casing board for the length of the pocket that's then cut um, into that uh, pulley style and uh, you'll have a cut for the length of the pocket behind the parting bead um, like that so it's hidden in that section and uh, that will be the section that comes out and gives you access to the weights. So to get to this weight, you uh, pull that pocket piece out. This strip here, you just it's not connected at the edges of, throughout the, uh, the length of the sash. It just hangs from the top, so it dangles. And um, you pull that strip of wood towards you hold it or hold it with your fingers against here then you've got access to this weight which will swing over and come out the pocket the actual shape of the pocket uh, I don't know if I can draw it for you on here really so it's a 20 mil board where am I going to draw that let's uh, extend these lines down so you can see what I'm on about with the pocket shape 
So it'd be, let's say, 100 mil up from, uh, from this sill section here. You'd start your pocket. It doesn't have to be 100 mil, but uh, yeah, there or thereabouts. It be, could be less if you've got really long weights. The bottom of the uh, pocket, is that 20 mil yet? So the bottom of the pocket would have like a rebate. So um, you can do this on the angle or flat. So if we treat this, this side here as the uh, inside of the window and this side as the weight side, and put a small beveled cut within it and then um, around 50 mil, 40, 50 mil higher, maybe not 50, let's go, uh, let's go 30 mil. Again, on the back, back side of the pocket, you'd do another cut. Um, and th they'd just go, just, you'd look at the grain of the timber You've got to keep an eye on the grain, make sure it's straight grained. If, it's, if the grain's slightly running this way, you're going to have to cut beyond, uh, beyond halfway. But cut into halfway or just slightly beyond. And then uh, you hit, if you hit this piece of timber and this piece of timber or keep this piece solid and just tap this one away from itself, the timber should split along the, the grain there between your two cuts for the thickness of that pocket. So you've already cut the width down, so you're only doing half of the pulley style's width, um, but it should split along them lines. Um, and then that gives you a perfect joint to, um, for it to join back together. You can cut it, so uh, you can cut that one from the face, the back face and that one from the face, and then cut in from the edge of the board through the sort of 50 mil thickness of timber um, but then you'd need to pack that section out. But the easiest way is to, to split that section off. Um, so it leaves you with the perfect uh, joint to go back together so that it's the perfect thickness. Then at the top side of the pocket, so that would be bottom side, um, there's several ways of doing it. You can do a similar sort of joint or you can just do two beveled cuts like this. Um, and that would be your, your pocket piece of timber. And it'd look something like that. So you just put a, uh, a screw then after you'd separated the two into the uh, back of that piece of timber. So the pulley style, you'd have a screw. And uh, a clearance hole here, and it'd just screw into there. And you'd, when you want to remove it, you unscrew that pull the bottom out and then the top just drops down um, from them cuts to keep it tight if you if you really wanted to um, if you use a nice fine sort of dovetail saw to cut this you only get a one mil cut um, you can put uh, a small piece of like cardboard or packing piece packing material within that pocket section there and um, it will just keep the the joint nice and tight. It's not really necessary because um, obviously it just sits up in place and then it's fixed here with the screw and you never really see the top side of that pocket because the, the sash horn will only sort of extend to, to this point here so as it as the window lifts up um, but it's something you can do if you need to or want to want to just solid it up from from having any form of rattle. So that's how the pocket works and that's how you'd cut it um, and yeah, so once you've cut this section out and the sides and then done these two cuts, the timber will still be attached, but you just give it a tap with a hammer nice and gently and the, the grain should just split away between them two cuts and uh, it gives you that, that access to the box. Other than that, uh, I can't really think of an awful lot that needs to be said. Um, if I come across anything that I've not mentioned or think I've not mentioned, then obviously I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go across it uh, or cover it in the following videos. But um, yeah, hopefully from this, from this picture here, you can, uh, you can see how the, the window is constructed and built and how all the parts sort of work together, um, seeing what's actually behind them um, and within the boxes, etc., uh, rather than just seeing what's on the outside and uh, 
taking a bit of a guess as to what's behind it. Um, next video, um, I'm going to start making the sashes. So uh, using these sizes and dimensions that I've drawn out here, um, I'm going to be uh, making the replacement sashes. So I hope to see you then.